Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an awesome little upcoming x86 powered single board computer that's capable of running Windows or Linux. Now before we get started, I want to get it out of the way. This is a prototype unit that we're taking a look at and the name isn't 100% official. It's a newer company to the market coming out of China and they've gone with like the N100 SBC or something very similar, but I'm going to be calling it the N100 Edge because we've got a really small single board computer here and the N100 actually refers to the CPU we're using in this unit. I have to mention it again, but yes, this is a prototype unit. Some stuff may be added, some stuff may be taken away, but you know, with this prototype, there's not much they really need to take away from it couple things that I'd love to see added to this, but they also want to keep the price down. They will be offering a few different RAM and storage variants. We'll take a look at the specs in just a second. But obviously, when we say single board computer, first thing that comes to mind is the Raspberry Pi. So I figured I'd give you a little size comparison here. And as you can see, boards are relatively the same size, but we've got a massive heatsink on the N100, and this is going to be required to run this at full boat. Now when it comes to I.O. at the time of making this video for the N100, over here on this side we've got a 3.5mm audio jack, full size HDMI, and this is HDMI 2.0 so we can do 4K60 out, and USB Type-C power in. They've recommended to use at least the 20 watt PD power supply for this unit, but I've actually been able to get this CPU to pull a little more, up to 28 watts when stressing out the CPU and GPU, so I can kind of get the max performance out of it. So I'm going to be going with a 35 watt charger. You don't have to do this, but you know, if you want to kind of stress this thing out, you will need a little more wattage. And of course, up front here, we've got gigabit ethernet. Would have been nice to have 2.5, but right now it's sitting at a gig. And we've also got four USB 3.1 ports. When it comes to the overall specs, we've got the new Intel N100 CPU, hence the name N100. Four cores, four threads, but this will boost up to 3.4 gigahertz, and the way it's set up in this is a base of 1.1 up to 3.4. There are plans to release a few different models with different RAM and storage configurations, so you'll be able to pick this up with 4 gigs, 8 or 16, but this is actually using LP DDR5 running at 4800 megahertz. And when it comes to storage, it'll be using eMMC 5.1, so it's not going to be as fast as an M.2 SSD, but they're going to be offering 64, 128, and a 256 gigabyte model. We've got four USB 3.1 ports, one Ethernet, one USB-C, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, and this is capable of running Windows or Linux. For this video, I've installed Windows 11 Pro, but if there's any interest I can do a full Linux video, just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so I've had this board for about a week and I've been messing around with it quite a bit. Obviously, we've got that N100 CPU. This was released in January of 2023, so this year at the time of making this video. Four cores, four threads. We don't have any extra here. This board has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5 RAM. It's non-X, so it's only running at 4800 megahertz. And Windows is telling me that it's running in single channel. But, you know, given the GPU here, we're actually getting some really good performance. This is the Intel UHD with only 24 execution units. And, of course, it's going to use system memory as VRAM. So, you know, at least we've got DDR5 there instead of DDR4. Overall, it's definitely a snappy little system. We don't have any built-in Wi-Fi right now, and we're not sure if that's even going to be a thing down the road. But I've got Ethernet plugged in right now, and these web pages load up really quickly. And what I've noticed about the CPU so far is turbo on two cores will go up to 3.4, but turbo on all four cores will only go up to 2.9. Hopefully this can change down the road. I've checked the BIOS, but I personally can't find any settings to mess around with. I have been testing out some 4K video playback, and uh, we've just got a YouTube video, 4K, 60, HDR. By the end of this, we only had six drop frames. And remember, I am on Ethernet. Wi-Fi might net us a couple more here and there, but overall, I mean, 4K video playback is quite nice on the N100. A couple months ago, I did take a look at a mini PC with this same chip, but it was using single channel DDR4. I can tell you that this little UHD GPU definitely sees a nice little bump in performance using DDR5. I definitely want to test out some Windows games and some emulation on this device, but uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was just the TDP. Out of the box, this was running at 15 watts, but I've used Throttle Stop to take it up to 28 watts in total, and that's with the CPU and the GPU maxed out. And at 28 watts, this little board does get quite hot. Now, I haven't hit thermal throttle yet, but I'm sure I could if I let it run for a long time at 28 watts, but under everyday normal use, it doesn't go over 70 degrees Celsius. 
And that's kind of a given. I mean, we're not really stressing out the GPU and CPU all the way like we would while we're gaming. But another thing to keep in mind is the fan here is only running on 5 volts. It's non-controllable right now. So down the road, they could throw a little more voltage at it to get it to spin up a little faster. But at 5 volts, you really can't even hear this thing spinning up. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were a couple benchmarks. And with this one here, I wanted to give you a little comparison between kind of the closest CPU right now, the N5105. I was kind of blown away to see exactly what this thing was doing. The N100 here got a single core of 1192, multi of 3136, and if you take a look at the N5105, which I have running at 25 watts, that's as high as I can get that little chip to go in that PC, single core 523, multi 1607, and both of these were using Geekbench 6.0.2. Really good jump in performance here. We do have that higher boost clock, but uh, yeah, I didn't expect it to be this much of a jump. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were just some GPU benchmarks, and I know we're not going to go off the scale with this thing, given that we only have 24 EUs here. 3D Mark Wildlife, 2,876, and the next one I ran was 3D Mark Night Raid with a 4,655. So the GPU benchmarks definitely weren't impressive, and I didn't expect them to be, but I figured we'd go ahead and test out some Windows gaming. First up, we've got Minecraft. I am at 1080p, and I'm not sure how this scales up. You know, the resolution of the operating system right now is at 1080. 24 chunks at 60 FPS. And fancy graphics is on. As you can see, that CPU is pulling up to 24 watts, and this is taken in consideration the GPU and CPU power. Next up, we've got Skyrim, and with this, I dropped it down to 900p low settings to get a steady 60. At 1080 low, we're right there on the edge, around 57 on average, but taking it down to 900p does allow us to play this at 60. I believe dual channel RAM would really help us out here, and uh, hopefully that's something that can be implemented into this board later on, but right now we're working with single channel. Dirt 3, 1080p, medium settings, not bad. This is definitely an older one, like most of the stuff I tested, and I tested older stuff because we kind of know how this thing's going to perform. We're getting an average of around 72 FPS with this game here. And before we move over to some emulation, I figured I'd test one more. We've got Left 4 Dead 2, 1080p, medium settings, getting an average of around 74 FPS. So these source games would be good to go. Something like Half-Life 2 is also going to run really well, Portal 2. But we can't expect this thing to run newer AAA games at 60 FPS. I can test more later on down the road if you're interested, just let me know. But uh, I do want to move over to some emulation because I think that was one of the most impressive things about this little board. And first on the list, we've got the Dolphin Emulator. As we know, this does Wii and GameCube. I started out with Wii here. We've got Tatsunoko versus Capcom. And with this game, using the Vulcan back in, I did have to drop it down to the native resolution, which was a little odd given the next one that I tested ran at 720p quite well. But at the native resolution, using the Vulcan back in, we're getting a steady 60 with Tatsunoko versus Capcom. And I've only seen it jump up to around 16 watts in total. But the next one was kind of the most surprising out of everything that I tested for GameCube and Wii, and that was F-Zero GX. As a lot of us already know, this game can really give lower-end chips a run for its money, especially on the track we're using here. This is Fire Field, but we're using the DirectX 11 backend, 720p, and running this game at 60fps. Pretty surprised to see this, and I mean, we're getting great performance here with GameCube and Wii. So let's take it up to PS2 emulation using PCSX2. We've got Gran Turismo 4 using the DirectX 11 back in 2x resolution, and I think we could probably go up with this game to around 2.5x the way it is. We're only pulling close to 19 watts here with this one. And of course, easier to emulate stuff like Crash Bandicoot can be upscaled quite a bit, up to 4x with something like that. Kingdom Hearts 2 can go up to 3x, but when I moved over to God of War 2, that's when I had to kind of drop it back down to 1.5. So obviously there is some more tweaking and tuning I can do with each of these emulators, but uh, not bad to see God of War 2 running at 60 FPS. Kind of surprised we were able to go up over 1. If you take a look at the older N5105, it's hard pressed to emulate this game at around 50 FPS at 0.5x resolution. So we do have a nice jump there. But the final one I tested was Wii U using SimU. We've got Bayonetta 2 here at the native resolution. 
60 FPS. So you can see that our CPU power is up over what we tested with GameCube and even PS2. We're at 20 watts here, but it's still not maxing that thing out. And I know with dual channel RAM, we could get much better performance with everything that we've tested so far, especially with that LP DDR5 running in dual channel. We could see a significant boost across the board, so this is something I'm definitely going to bring back to the manufacturer. Hopefully, we can.